Well, that's quite a day I had there. Believe me, that's quite an airplane, that B-58 Hustler. Like a whole lot of people, I've been very interested in the development of the Strategic Air Command supersonic bomber. And when Colonel Brick Holstrom gave me a chance to fly, well, that really got me excited. After all, the bird flies Mach 2. Now, Mach 2, that's two times as fast as the speed of sound. Oh, they made me a member of the club. The B-58, in its brief history, has won just about every trophy and set just about every world record for high-performance aircraft there is. It's a far cry from this. I flew B-24s World War II. And as a reserve officer, I've had a chance to watch the development of a lot of fine airplanes. And believe me, we've had some great ones. Real champions. But here, here's the new champ. We call it the champion of champions. Now, this airplane has already won the Thompson, the Blario, the Bendix, the McKay, and the Harmon Trophy. It set 14 world records in international competition. That's a performance unequaled in the annals of aviation. Now, don't get the idea that it's just a flying hot rod. The B-58 is a sack medium bomber. Two wings, the 43rd and the 305th, are operational. And some of their airplanes are on alert right now, ready to strike enemy targets. Like those before, the B-58 was developed to do a job for the Air Force no existing weapon system could do. And that job was and is a grim one. Total destruction of any enemy aggressor anywhere on the face of the earth, delivered at supersonic speed with man-bomber accuracy. Apparently, its unique performance convinced the Air Force it could do what they expected to. And in a variety of ways, this Delta Wing, for instance, because of it, SAC can launch high speed on the deck mission. But uh, let's get that projector going again, and I'll show you some of the film I play. For low-level flying, the Hustler's strictly in a class by itself. This was proved very early when a test pilot flew one from Texas to California at nearly the speed of sound, never more than 500 feet above the ground, a mission that would shake the wings off conventional bombers. You can see the importance of this. It can sneak under enemy radar nets. You can't find it, you know, you can't hit it. Now, there are no records, no trophies for on-the-deck capability. But should a crew ever need this in combat, it could mean mission success, something of far greater importance to them and to all of us. There are trophies and records, plenty of them, in SAC's combat competition. And on its debut, the Hustler won its share. Here's one of the two crews entered from the 43rd Bomb Wing, Carswell Air Force Base in Texas. Under combat conditions, they scrambled, boarded, started engines, and got wheels rolling in two minutes and 10 seconds, half the time required for other bombers. Taking off at sundown on two successive evenings, a lone B-58 competed against 12 other bombers, and when the results were in, its crew had racked up the best score for both high and low altitude bombing. General Thomas S. Power awarded trophies to Major Harold E. Conser, the winning pilot and his crew. Officials, this Air Force show proved that their new weapon system had an accurate striking power. And what's more, that the time had come for the whole world to see what the B-58 could do. Six international speed records. This is what they went after first. Two laps had to be flown around a closed course of 1,000 kilometers, about 1,243 miles, carrying a 4,000-pound payload. 
Here's the three-man crew from the 43rd bomb wing. Major Henry J. Dutchendorf, the first track pilot to fly the B-58, by the way, and Captain William L. Polemus, navigator, Captain Raymond R. Wagner, defense systems operator. Accurate radar data played a large part in certification. That's the crew's commanding general, Nils Oman, standing at the tracking board with the official judges of the race from the National Aeronautic Association. Chase planes, some of our fastest fighters, also carried judges. They could catch up for a quick look, but they couldn't keep up. But on the ground, the tracking instruments were A-OK, -okay, ready to go. Four miles out. Three. Two. One. And the race is on. NAA officials time it. Watch it climb, and a sonic boom as the bomber rips the air. Like an arrow some Indian guard might have shot to make it thunder. One thousand four hundred and twenty-five miles per hour was the ground speed reach. Average speed for the first lap was 1,061. For the second, 1,200. Major Dutchendorf's crew flew it exactly as planned, establishing six world records in a single flight. You see, they went with 4,000 pounds, so they automatically set records for 2,000 pounds and for no payload at all. Now, this gave them three records for the first lap of 1,000 kilometers, and three more for the second, six in all. And five of these had been held by the Soviet Union. And I, you'd think this airplane had pretty well proved itself, wouldn't you? I mean, what, what can you expect of a medium bomber? Speed, not just in flashes, but for the long stretch, and carrying loads to altitudes that only a heavy bomber is supposed to and maneuvering around up there like a fighter? Well, before the ink had a chance to dry on the record books, another one set out to break three of these new records. Piloting was Major Harold E. Confer, Major Richard H. Weir was navigator, and Captain Howard S. Bialis, DSO. We saw them receiving trophies in the bombing competition. Today's flight, like the previous one, was uphill all the way. They crossed the starting line at 40,000 feet, finished above 50. To give you an idea of the caliber of B-58 pilots, here Major Confer was making a 185 degree turn, keeping a 60 degree bank angle throughout and pulling more than two Gs. Now that's twice the force of gravity. And from down below, the turn looked razor sharp. The least caught inside the crosswire, of course, would have put them out of the race. But they finished in fine style. Having circled the 1,000 kilometer course at an average of 1,284 miles per hour, upping the speed of the previous flight by nearly 100 miles per hour, and winning for themselves three of the six B-58 world records. To the man of the 43rd, it was all one. They were keeping the records in the family. And preparing a Carswell homecoming Major Confer's crew wouldn't soon forget. Their own family, friends, newspaper men, and VIPs, just about everybody turned out. But who wants to see VIPs or reporters at a time like this, hmm? The Thompson Trophy was awarded to Major Confer's crew for speed supremacy and perhaps just as important, for practical maneuverability in the air. Now, the Thompson Trophy was one we'd all heard about, of course, and respected. But even the few racing buffs who had heard about the next one, the Blario Trophy, well, they felt that no one short of Buck Rogers would ever win that one. Louis Blario, 
the pioneer French aviator, first offered the trophy in 1930, the era of Lindbergh. At a time when an airplane would need to fly at least 10 times as fast as the Spirit of St. Louis just to qualify. But Blario, Blario the visionary, he looked for an airplane to come along, perhaps in his own generation, that could fly 2,000 kilometers per hour and hold that speed for 30 minutes. Now, if somebody had asked me 30 years ago if I thought so much progress was possible, I'd probably have said, well, I, I wouldn't bet on it. But not Monsieur Blario. He made the bet. And 31 years later, well, let's see how it was won. The run was made over a closed course of 669 miles, starting at S Air Force Base in California and reaching points in Arizona and Nevada. The ground crew had done their part. Taking care of a sophisticated bird like this is no job for a shade tree mechanic. as they come, typical of the ground crews that keep the B-58 up there doing what's never been done before. Here's Major Eugene Murphy piloting this one, entering the starting gate at 44,000 feet and climbing. One of the Blario rules was that altitude at the close of the run must be equal to or greater than the start. Major Murphy checks with his defense systems operator, Lieutenant David F. Dickerson. On a flight like this, the DSO helps the pilot handle problems of mock and fuel transfer so the center of gravity stays exactly right. They're coming up on the final turn and the rough. Lone Pine, California, at the foot of Mount Whitney. The pilot gets a reading from his navigator, Major Eugene F. Moses. Round they go. 93 degrees at Mach 2, and then the home stretch. In only one try, the B-58 became the first airplane to average 1,302 miles per hour for 30 minutes and its crew became the permanent winner of the Blario Trophy. Those on hand knew they'd witnessed a beautiful performance, precision flying and teamwork. In Paris at the award presentation, Madame Blario, the widow of the donor, stood with the crew, and her presence signified that her husband's vision had indeed been fulfilled, even in his own generation. Now, from what you've seen already, you've got a pretty good idea of the Hustler's speed, endurance, and versatility. It has another extraordinary capability, too, high altitude. World altitude records for payloads of 5,000 kilograms, that's slightly over 11,000 pounds, and 2,000 kilograms were held by the Soviet Union. That is, they were until the B-58 went after them. They were then claimed for the United States by a crew from the Air Force Systems Command, which does flight testing for the Air Force. A veteran test pilot, Major Fitzhugh Fulton, approached the pull-up point at 35,000 feet, pouring on the coal. Still going, and already they've broken the Soviet record. There's the peak after a bullet-like trajectory.
that's 16 and a half miles high. On the spot certification was made by the National Aeronautics Association, just as on all previous record flights. Their figures were verified later by the Federation Aeronautique Internationale, Paris, France, as two official world records. Although flights like this are pretty much all on a day's work to test crews, this one must have given special satisfaction to Major Fitz Fulton, who early in 1957 was the first Air Force test pilot to fly a B-58. Other members of the high altitude crew were Captain William R. Payne, navigator, and a civilian flight test engineer, Charles R. Haynes. At headquarters, SAC, the codename Operation Heat Rise was given the next event. The B-58's round trip flight from Los Angeles to New York, which added three more world records to its list and the Bendix Trophy. For over 30 years, the Bendix free-for-all transcontinental speed race has been a proving ground for the newest and the fastest. Starting back when a daring young pilot by the name of Jimmy Doolittle took off from the Los Angeles suburb and made tracks east following roughly the same course out of Los Angeles as Captain Robert G. Sowers, the B-58 pilot. Here's the navigator, Captain Robert McDonald, and the DSO, Captain John D. Walton. Almost as fast as you can read their names, the B-58's over them and gone. People knew it was up there, all right. Including some who had never heard this kind of thunder before. You see, most supersonic training missions are flown in special corridors away from heavily populated areas. But today, back sent it right over Sky Route 66. At mid-country, the bomber slowed down to 500 miles an hour and took on fuel. Now, talk about having flying down to a fine art. Now, just, just watch this hookup. With their tanks full again, they're ready to take the giant step on to New York. Each passing minute puts them 20 miles further along. Air Force officials were sweating it out with the NAA, ready for the time hack. And high overhead, an official waited to make an eyewitness validation of the Pentagon. In just a hair over two hours, two hours and 58 seconds officially, the Hustler completed its New York run, won the Bendix Trophy, and became the first bomber to do so. But this is just half the story. Turning around, the crew headed right back for Los Angeles, trying to beat the sun's westward track across the country. Such greats as John Glenn had tried the sun run without success in manned aircraft. When the B-58 was clocked in Los Angeles, officials knew that a history-making flight was coming to an end. The sun had been challenged, 
and beat by 41 minutes. This flight set three world speed marks that were the beginning of a new era in transcontinental flight. L.A. to New York in just over two hours. New York to L.A. in two hours and 16 minutes. And a round trip in four hours and 41 minutes. I know you must be thinking what I am, that pretty soon commercial jets may be taking us back and forth across the country this fast. Immediately after the flight, the Bendix Trophy was presented to Captain Sowers, McDonald, and Walton. And the Distinguished Flying Cross was awarded them by General Thomas S. Power. Now, in watching these flights, we don't want to lose sight of something I only touched on. And that is, with the exception of the high altitude run, these records and trophies were won by SAC combat ready crews flying combat ready bombers. But peace is SAC's profession. And part of their strategy has been to keep the peace by showing everyone, everywhere, this weapon's capability. If there had been any questions about its intercontinental range, these were answered once and for all in Paris. At the famous Le Bourget Field, a highlight of the international air show came when a hustler touched down after spanning the North Atlantic at an average speed of 1,089 miles per hour. The crew had flown nonstop from Carswell Air Force Base by way of Washington, D.C. and New York. Their time from Washington to Paris was three hours, 39 minutes. From New York to Paris, three hours and 20 minutes, including two aerial refueling. They called this one the Lindy Hop a flight that ended on the exact spot where Charles A. Lindbergh had cut the engine of the Spirit of St. Louis. This gesture was deeply felt by all. Overseas newspapers said that this flight had done as much as anything in recent years to enhance American prestige abroad. Major William R. Payne was the pilot, Captain William L. Polemus was navigator, and Captain Raymond R. Wagner, DSO. Their time from Washington to Paris and from New York to Paris added two more to the string of official B-58 world records, making it 14 in all. How was the flight? Routine, they say. Routine. Meaning that in many ways, the Atlantic crossing was like the training mission being flown every day by SAC. But in other ways, of course, as they themselves knew when they got together around the Lindbergh plaque, their Lindy Hop came with the award of the Harmon Trophy. In a White House ceremony, President Kennedy personally honored the pilot for outstanding contribution to aviation. for outstanding contribution to aviation and peace in our time. Well, I guess that just about sums up the story of the B-58 force. It's a success story. 14 international records and five major trophies won by the only bomber in the free world that's operational at supersonic speed. Now, it may never be used in anger. We hope and pray it never will. But if it is, the Strategic Air Command B-58 force has the airplane to do the job. <laughs>